All right, Candace, it was very nice meeting you. Here's what we're gonna be doing five minutes in the morning, five minutes at night. Let our two hemispheres of our brain speak through our two different sides and let's reprogram our way that we think about music here. I know that you hear it inside your head and we're gonna get these noodles and doodles out of our iron fingers so you can play whatever's in your head, all right? So our chord that we learned this week was gonna be the C. And the way we get there and what we, what we figured out is, what we're taught is this is a C. We play with our first finger and that's basically how we go. But if we played with our third finger, it would make sense that one, two, three, it's the third note up. So what I've devised is these little exercises. Uh, I actually found them and play them on guitar to help my fingers strengthen. But you're going to start with your first finger on the first fret, and then you're going to go to the second fret, third fret, and fourth fret. You're going to want to keep the fingers on those frets until you get to the fourth. If you have a hard time going one to four there, you can let the last one's up by the time you get to fourth but the idea is you don't want to put a finger down and then d directly lift it way off the fretboard because you want them to be centrally located so i would say with your thumb and then your first finger then your second finger and then your third finger and then even your pinky you don't have to but um, it will strengthen the muscle memory of being able to go like this that's about the best i could do with that but um here we go so i'm gonna start off with my thumb um and go down up down, up, down, up, down, up. What I'm doing is I'm going down through the note and going underneath the note and coming up through it. Down, up, down, up, down, up. So when you get it going fast, it looks like that strumming basically, cool? They're not all going to be down strokes. So with the pointer finger, you're gonna be doing down, up, down, uh, pluck, 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 pluck. Um, Middle finger, pluck, 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 pluck. But with the thumb, it's going to be a down, up, down, up kind of movement. All right? So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And when you get them slow, down, put your finger on, up, put your finger on, down, put your finger up. It turns into this. And then go down. What happens is you develop a muscle that allows you to do this up and down movement with your thumb and eventually that turns into rolls something like that okay that's finger stone so then you move on to your first finger First finger, go to your middle finger. Some helpful hints, when you go up, you can rest your thumb on the other strings that aren't being played, maybe the string right next to it, just in case if you hit the wrong string, it mutes it. Something like that. Uh, and then when you get through that, I would say go at least to your third finger and develop this muscle memory. It'll correlate between the two hands. You know, help your right hand develop a little bit more skill over here. The pinky is pretty much useless. Try it if you want. See how it is. <laughs> if not. So those are the two. You take your C and you use your rhythm of down with the back of your fingernails on the thumb and your, uh, your fingers. Down, up, down, up. That'll be the motion for that. But it's not so overdefined like that. It's going to be more of a uh, C, C, C. Switch finger, C, 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 anticipate the swing. The, if you anticipate the finger switch, you'll always be in rhythm. Anticipate it right here. So what we're gonna do on every single chord that we learn, we're gonna do this rhythm and go from finger one, finger two, finger three, finger four. No matter what rhythm we go at, no matter where we put our fingers, being able to play that chord. So you're pretty versatile where it doesn't have to do that and you can switch fingers between movements of strumming. What happens is the two hands become independent from themselves. Here's a case and example. Here's a G. I make the G by putting my first finger on the second fret on the D. All right. I also make the G by doing my second finger on the D and my third finger on the B and my pinky on the actual G. We'll go over in theory why you could say G, A, B, C, D, cut out the second and the fourth and have G, B, and D, because you cut out the other two, and go, oh, here's my G, here's my B, here's my D. That's a G major. 
So I'm not using my first finger. If you remember your spider exercises and go one, two, three, four, one, two, my second finger lands on there. So try making the G with that. And once you've got the one, two, three, four, one, and two, switch here. See how I switched to the G with my first finger on the D, second finger on the B, third finger on the G, and now my pinky's off the fretboard? We're going to be doing that with every chord. Here's an F, switch to an F. Here's an a D, here's a D, here's a D, here's a D, D, D. Um, here's a um, B. Here's a B in the secondary position. Here's an E minor, here's an E minor. So long story short, we're gonna be going through all these chords, learning how to play them different functions and as soon as we get our chords kind of down we're just going to layer in our do re mi fa so la ti do which is the same pattern in every key so all we really got to do is remember a pattern one or two or three or four or five or six and actually seven patterns in total and you got every chord and every movement on this thing and we're going to get you strumming here in no time now remember the things i'm teaching you are going to give you the foundation to be in the right position so no matter how long you keep taking a musical instrument if you change musical instruments, the theory on which to learn it will still be the same. So if you pick a violin tomorrow or a mandolin or a banjo, you can still go to the first part fret, hear a note, and go up and get used to the places where your fingers are going to move. To the point where if you play the same thing up here, you would still have mobile dexterity, having both of your fingers on both hands working independently of each other. And that inevitably leads to being able to do uh, something like... The chords that I played there aren't too challenging. I have a C, then I moved it up to a D. I used a diminished chord, half diminished it, and then I resolved it to its fifth. So long story short, music is not hard. It's just how much effort we want to put into learning theory. If we want to just learn chords over here, I can teach you all the major seven chords below here and teach you how to use the pentatonics over the top to make some music, or you could use the actual major scales. Anyway, a lot to learn, but then again, uh, you don't have to learn it all in one day. It's a whole lifetime of effort. I'm looking forward to our journey together, and I'll see you next week. Aloha.